Hey, cloud practitioners, welcome. As you probably know, AWS released their updated cloud practitioner exam today. This is CLF CO2, the second release of the exam. I took and passed mine, yay. So this video is just gonna be a quick first look and some of my thoughts. I'll cover an overview of the exam as well as the new exam guide. What was new, different, harder, easier, in my humble opinion, than the first exam? Some study materials that you can use as you're preparing, mechanics of how to register, and be sure to stick around till the end because you might be able to get 50% off the cost of the exam. So let's get started. This is the official exam page, easy to find through your favorite search engine. The exam is 90 minutes. It has 65 questions all multiple choice or multiple response. It's 100 US dollars and you can register through Pearson View. But let me show you the latest exam guide. If you come down here under prepare for the exam, open up the exam guide here. This will give you a PDF version. Now the first thing to notice is that it's 22 pages long. If you took the first exam, it was only nine pages, so it's a little bit overwhelming, but don't panic. I think what's happened is, first of all, they've used a larger font, but I think it's just written in a way that's much more detailed and comprehensive. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, they actually give you a comparison of this exam compared to the previous one. You'll see the domains have changed just a little bit in the percentages, a little bit more security and compliance, a little bit less billing, pricing, and support, and so on. This section here about additions of content, though, this is important. There were several questions related to this, which I'll hit on again in just a little bit, but the stuff around migration and the cloud adoption framework, very important that you know those things. No content was deleted, but there was some recategorizing of things. I don't find these super helpful as far as what to study for, but it's nice that they documented them. I think the most useful breakdown is to come up to page four and go through the different domains here. Work through the bullet points, make sure you understand the different concepts and services and so on that are covered here, similar to what they've done in the previous exam. But in terms of what's actually on the exam, I found this to be closer than things in the appendix. If we keep scrolling. So the appendix covers technologies and concepts that might appear on the exam, but there's just a ton of stuff here. There's probably I don't know, 150 things here. And there's only 65 questions on the exam, so you do the math. There's a lot here. Uh, there are some things that are specifically called out as out of scope, which is helpful. But I would say study, starting on page four, the different domain concepts and services. So that's the official starting place, the official guide. Get familiar with that. But then just kind of my own take and some thoughts from having taken the exam and also having the previous exam under my belt as well. Obviously, all just my humble opinion, and huge disclaimer, your mileage may vary. Nobody gets exactly the same questions on the test, so I'll just give you some high-level thoughts and tips. Overall, I thought it was very similar to the previous exam. If I had to guess a percentage, I would say about 90% similar, based on no scientific evidence. That's just kind of my gut from having taken both of them. Because the core concepts and benefits of cloud really haven't changed, if you think about it, there's a few new services and features, but the foundation is very similar from year to year. So if you took the previous version of the exam and you're comfortable with that material, this version will be a breeze. Like I mentioned a minute ago, though, you do want to get familiar with the Cloud Adoption Framework, or CAF. This is new since the prior exam. And I'll put a bunch of links in the description, including one to this. But this page right here pretty much covers what you need to know. Understand the different capabilities from a high level and generally what this framework is all about. And then I would say just make sure that you're fresh on the support plans like the developer, business, enterprise, basic, and that type of thing. I find at least for me, I'm just on one plan and I don't always think about the other ones, which might be true for you as well. So make sure you're clear on that as well as the well-architected framework. Several questions could come up there the shared responsibility model, and then just generally design principles like loose coupling, designing for failure, those types of things. So these are not new concepts, just a reminder to kind of refresh if you don't look at these things every day. Make sure you understand the different EC2 pricing models, things like reserved instances, spot, on-demand, and savings plans. 
Savings plans are new-ish, and they tend to be the recommended way to go over reserved, which are a little bit less flexible. But just generally know which is the cheapest, which can be interrupted, that type of thing. The S3 storage tiers could come up as well, so make sure you understand the different levels there, which are the most cost-effective, and so on. For AI and machine learning, there's definitely been a lot happen in that space in the last couple of years. But on the exam, if you just know kind of high level things like transcribe, which will take speech and convert it into text, poly will take text and convert it into speech. Think of poly the parrot can talk. Textract will extract text, handwriting, and data from documents that you scan. And then recognition is things like image recognition, being able to see a face in an image, that type of thing, as well as for video. These are probably the most popular services out there, so just know them at a high level. Now let's talk about some things that you can use for study resources. Back to the official exam page, I would recommend taking the practice question set here, maybe as a first step, just to sort of test where your knowledge is. There are 20 questions, this is totally free, and this will take you out to AWS Skill Builder with an exam simulator to go through the questions. You do get explanations for all of your answers on these questions, which is really nice. So it's a good way to learn and understand where you might still have gaps. There are some additional AWS resources right here. I haven't taken these recently, but you might want to check those out. Some more enhanced learning here. But as a shameless plug, I also have a Cloud Practitioner course through Zero to Mastery. I'll link it down in the description. As of this very second, it hasn't been updated for the latest version since it just came out today, but I'll be working on that in the coming weeks. I'll add a note in the description when it is updated. But if you decide to register for the current version, you'll get all of those updates. You won't need to get a second course. So if you're interested, check it out. It's about seven and a half hours, and there's lots of practice questions and a practice exam at the end as well. And speaking of practice exams, there is the official practice exam here that is 65 questions. It's timed, so it's very similar to the environment that you'll be testing in when you take the actual exam. This one used to be available as a one-off purchase. It's now part of a subscription to Skill Builder, $29 a month. So that's the only way you can access it now. I took it. And now that I've taken the actual exam, I would really recommend taking the practice exam. A lot of the concepts are very similar. And once again, you'll get explanations for the correct answers as well as the incorrect answers. So I would say if you can take that test and you're passing with 85-90%, you're probably going to be just fine on the actual exam. Okay, so you've studied, you're ready to go. You can schedule the exam here. This will take you out to aws.training slash certification. You do need a separate certification account. I'm already logged into mine but this will take you to certmetrics.com. Then you can come in here and register for the exam. Mine is still showing up under a scheduled exam because I just completed it, but yours will show up under eligible exams. And then you can click on schedule with Pearson View, basically walk through the wizard, choose whether you wanna take it in person or online, your language preference, and then you pick a date and time. But very importantly, let me show you how you might be able to save some money. Up here on the top, click on benefits. If you've taken previous AWS certifications and passed them, then you get a 50% discount for your next exam. If this is the first certification you're taking, this won't apply to you, but if you have other certifications already, then you'll be able to get 50% off this one. All you need to do is just click on claim benefit here. As soon as you click that, there's a code that will show up in this column here. And then you just take that code over to certain metrics, and when you're checking out for the exam, just enter that code and it will knock 50% off the price of it. So for this one, it should end up at $50 total instead of $100, which is pretty awesome. So that does it for this video. I hope that was helpful. If you want me to do some more detailed videos on how to prepare or the types of questions or anything like that, just let me know below in the comments. And also, when you pass the exam, feel free to drop that in the comments too. I just love seeing that kind of stuff. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.